Now, when you're doing figuring on any mirror, but in particular in a situation like this where we're working on an edge, there are a bunch of little tricks that I can show you that will help you uh, to accomplish a couple things. Uh, the first thing we talked about was trying to isolate the zone that we need to work and not to mess up the things that are on e either side of it. Well, one of the problems that you have with that is blending. And one of the best things to do to help blend is to uh, get the right shape of a lap. Now this pitch lap, if you take a look at it here, I've chopped the edges away. There's little corners that have been taken out here so that the lap is scalloped on the edge or starred. And uh, what that does is to concentrate the action toward the center of the lap and let the action taper off here in, uh, where the, the surface area is missing. And that helps blend the action where you get most of the action here and then the action tapers off away from the center and uh, that helps you to keep from getting an abrupt uh, change where the, there's pitch lap action and then there's nothing. Uh, if you look at the other pitch laps here, they're all starred like that more or less. Uh, this big one has uh, big chunks taken out of it here, you can see. And the three and a half inch lap is the same way. Big pieces taken out of it. <laughs> so that helps with blending to make sure that your action is smoothly carried out to either side. Now the next thing, when you're actually doing the work, uh, if you were to hold the pitch lap in exactly the same point for all of your work, whatever pattern you have in the pitch lap would be faithfully reproduced on the mirror. So in order to get rid of that, you have to rotate the pitch lap in your hands as you're doing the stroke. I'll show you that with this three and a half inch pitch lap. As I stroke, I'll take three strokes and then I'll rotate it. Two, three, rotate. One, two, three, rotate. You can see the marks on the back there rotate around as I rotate the pitch lap in my hands. Now I'll take some given number of strokes and then rotate the pitch lap. It's hard for me to keep count while I'm talking here. I don't have that much brain power quite. But uh, what I'll do is I'll do three strokes and then rotate. Three strokes and then rotate. Three strokes and rotate. And I'll do that for maybe some whole number of minutes. You know, I might do it for uh, two minutes of a session. And then I'll say, okay, now I'm going to do it, rotate after every two. So then I'll go one, two, rotate. One, two, rotate. One, two, rotate. And so by changing up your rotation period like that, uh, that also helps smooth out the action on your mirror. It's always hard when you're working with these little tiny pitch laps. They have such a high PSI on the mirror that they're prone to getting marks left over from the pitch lap. So by rotating this pitch lap in your hands, you can help average out those marks. Okay, the, the next technique, uh, when you're doing any work like this that's repetitive on one narrow small zone, uh, a lot of times you, it, it's common to use straight strokes. These are called tangential strokes. And with a tangential stroke, you're just moving in a straight line back and forth. Now, again, if you do this over and over again, you're going to leave some patterning on your tool, uh, but worst of all, you're going to uh, roughen up the tool. Any time that you start and then stop or change direction on the tool, the point at the edge of that where you started and stopped, the point that you went up to and went back, gets a little bit rougher because that's an abrupt uh, change of direction and you get a, a discontinuity there with this pressure. So one technique to do to get rid of that is to use a long elliptical stroke instead and that looks like this. So instead of going straight forward and backward, I'm going around in an ellipse. Now the elliptical stroke is nice. Uh, it, it helps to soften the roughness that you'll get on a, on a mirror from doing these narrow zones. Uh, but the drawback to it is that it tends to act like your tool is wider than it is. Uh, obviously to make an elliptical stroke you have to uh, widen the left to right pattern of what you're doing. So if, if I'm doing an elliptical stroke with this little three inch pitch lap, it actually looks like a three and a half inch tool or maybe even a three and three quarter inch tool because of the widening caused by doing the elliptical action there. So what I'll do is I'll mix it up where I'll do straight strokes for a couple minutes like this and uh, I'll watch my timer and after a couple minutes have gone and I hit a, my spot on the mirror, I'll switch over to elliptical strokes or sometimes uh, 
I'll, I'll just play games with my mark. When my mark comes up, I'll just alternate every other uh, lap. First lap I'll do straight strokes, and the next lap I'll do elliptical strokes. And again, this helps to change the pattern of what you're doing while keeping the correction mostly going into the spot where you want it to go. Now there's one other trick for helping to blend your action. In this situation I've got with this particular mirror, I don't want this correction to go in uh, on the left hand edge here of where this little pitch lap would go. So what you can do then is to V uh, the stroke during uh, the processing time. And what that means is I'll stroke one, two, three, and then stroke toward the center. One, two, three, inside. One, two, three, inside. One, two, three, inside. But, but I'm exaggerating it here. You don't want that inside stroke to actually be very big. So I'll, I'll actually execute it here and it's one, two, three, inside. One, two, three, inside. What you can see is what I'm actually doing, I'm only moving it about a half an inch to the left. And by doing that V off like that, that tends to blend the action of the little pitch lap in toward the center a little bit and spread the action around so that you don't get a big build-up uh, discontinuity there where the left-hand edge of the lap hits. So again this is a technique where you can vary the execution of the technique. For example, I can go 1, 2, 3, V, 1, 2, 3, V, 1, 2, 3, V, and then when I hit uh, the uh, marker on the mirror, I'll go 1, 2, V, 1, 2, V, 1, 2, V. So I'll change it from 2 to 3 or 3 to 4, and I tend to do it in whole laps. So I'll wait for that marker to come around to make the change and then initiate your V at that point. So that's a few different techniques that will help to uh, both keep the mirror smooth so that you don't see marks and also to blend your action so that you don't have discontinuities in the zones. The first point is to make that star pattern on your pitch lap. Second point is to sometimes use straight strokes and sometimes use elliptic, long thin elliptical strokes. Another technique, use the V. One, two, three, V inside. And then for both the uh, elliptical strokes there, you can change the count. You might do three and then inside, or you might do two and then inside, or you might do four and then inside. And again, I wait until my mark comes and then change my pattern. Uh, with any fine figuring toward the end of a mirror, you'd like every action you do to go a whole number of times around the mirror so that uh, you don't induce any astigmatism on the mirror late in the game like that. So that's just a few techniques to uh, help you create a nice smooth surface and to uh, put the figuring action in at exactly the point that you want. And remember, anytime you're figuring, a polishing lap has a center, a right edge, and a left edge. And you have to take into account the action that you'll get from all three of those on the surface of the mirror in order to be successful. You have to broaden your thinking. You can't just think about putting the center of the mirror someplace and working. You have to think, what are the consequences of this pitch lap? What's the right-hand edge going to be doing over there? What's the left-hand edge going to be doing? And the part that's hard about that, because the edge of the lap is a big discontinuity, there's nothing here and something there, you actually get a bigger discontinuity than under the center of the lap, which just basically has an averaging sort of effect on the mirror. So you really have to keep the... Uh, edges of the lap in mind when you're working a high zone like that. Mm -hmm.